Hello everyone. Today I will cover some selected topics related to the treatment of androgenic alopecia in women and in men with finasteride or dutasteride. Let's go. The story began with Charles Huggins many years ago. He discovered that prostate cancer may be treated first with estrogens and then later with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. From this moment on, our knowledge about 5-alpha reductases and 5-alpha reductase inhibitors has significantly increased. And now we know that there are at least three isoforms of 5-alpha reductases. This is the isoform 1, 2, and 3. All these three isoforms convert testosterone to dihydrotestosterone, which is important for the prostate, but also for the hair follicle miniaturization. Dihydrotestosterone, as we know, is extremely important for androgenic alopecia because it is driving the miniaturization of the hair follicle and the miniaturization of the hair which leads to clinically apparent loss of hair and at the final stage we should remember this in the context of the treatment in the final stage there will be a decrease in the number of hair follicles and follicle dropout. In clinical practice, finasteride and dutasteride have scientifically proven efficacy in androgenic alopecia both in women and in men. It is better documented in men compared to women, but in women also these drugs have become the standard of treatment in many patients with androgenic alopecia. The treatment of androgenic alopecia is always a decision which takes into consideration many individual aspects of a Every patient. But in general, the recommendations which I follow in many of my patients is that I start with minoxidil. Sometimes, depending on the patient, I will add from the beginning finasteride. The minoxidil is often topical. However, in recent years, we were replacing it very commonly with the systemic form of minoxidil. In some cases, I combine oral and topical minoxidil. So we go on with minoxidil and finasteride both in women and in men. If this is not effective, I will then start dutasteride. So I will switch from finasteride to dutasteride. I know that some experts prefer to start with the dutasteride. And today I will explain why and what is their point of view. I am quite happy that I was the co-author of the first ever publication to show clinical efficacy of dutasteride in androgenic alopecia in a woman. In general, dutasteride is more effective compared to finasteride in the treatment of androgenic alopecia both in women and in men. Why? It is quite clear because it inhibits all three isoforms of 5-alpha reductase. Why do many of us still start the treatment with finasteride? Well, we start the treatment with finasteride because it has a shorter half-life and we can better influence the course of the treatment. In clinical practice, it is good to remember that both finasteride and dutasteride show highest efficacy in younger patients and we can expect best efficacy in women who are less than 50 years old and in men who are less than 40 years old. Finasteride and dutasteride are well tolerated in clinical practice with limited, if any, and reversible adverse events. However, a topic which was discussed for quite a while was the possibility of sexual adverse effects. And there were many studies which were performed and not all the studies were adhering to highest quality standards. And the recent meta-analysis on the average results from the published data shows that in patients who were treated with finasteride, 5. 0.3% of patients had sexual adverse effects. In these studies, the placebo accounted for 3.0% of patients, so the difference was 2.3. For dutasteride, the number was 8.5 for dutasteride. In these studies, placebo accounted for 6.2% of patients who experienced sexual adverse effects, and the difference was not statistically significant. However, it is not clear, maybe it depends on the number of patient studies. What I believe may be relevant is that the risk of discontinuing treatment because of sexual adverse events is similar to placebo. Over 20 years ago, there was a publication or some publication which referred 
to two cases of men who developed breast cancer and they were treated with finasteride. One of these men developed the breast cancer before he started finasteride. Anyhow, this started the discussion of the possible development of breast cancer in men who are treated with finasteride. And there are multiple studies on this which finally cleared that with finasteride and dutasteride there may be some increased breast tenderness, there may be some gynecomastia, which is quite rare. It is 40 per 10,000 person years of treatment with 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. And beyond any doubt, 5-alpha reductase inhibitors are not associated with breast cancer in men. There were no cases of breast cancer in women treated with finasteride or dutasteride as far as my literature search goes, and there were no studies on this topic. And even there is one opinion which indicates that finasteride may be serving as a prevention for postmenopausal breast cancer in women. In regard to women, it is important to remember that both finasteride and dutasteride in women of childbearing potential require adequate contraception because of the inhibitory effect of both these drugs on development of the external genitals in the male. For people who don't like tablets or who do not want to take the finasteride tablets, a solution may be the application of topical finasteride. The topical finasteride in the form of a 0.25% finasteride spray is now available in few European countries. As far as I remember, the first country was Italy, but now the number of countries where the drug is available is increasing. It is a prescription drug. One dispersion of the drug contains approximately 0.1% milligram of finasteride and the clinical trial was with one to four dispersions per day so it would be up to 0.45 milligram per day so less than a one milligram tablet and the efficacy of this treatment was shown to be comparable to the one milligram tablet in patients with androgenetic alopecia. But we may ask ourselves whether or not the topical form of finasteride is a solution for people who would like to avoid the systemic effects of finasteride. Well, the answer is no, because finasteride from the topical solution is absorbed systemically. And it has been shown that the topical form of the finasteride is detectable in the serum of patients. The higher the dose applied in a topical way, the higher the concentration in the serum and it also has been shown that the 0.25 finasteride will decrease the plasma level of dihydrotestosterone so this is the hormone which is responsible for the hair follicle miniaturization in androgenic alopecia so we can imagine that with a topical form we can increase the concentration of the drug in the scalp area even though this was not scientifically proven however we cannot avoid the systemic effect with the topical form so just to conclude it is important to know that finasteride and dutasteride provide really a great progress in the treatment of androgenic alopecia both in women and in men. However, what in my opinion is most important is to start with the correct diagnosis because there are so many mimickers of androgenic alopecia and if we treat the wrong disease with the wrong treatment, then we are not likely to have a therapeutic success. Thank you very much for listening and if you would like to hear more about hair diseases please consider subscribing to my youtube channel thanks a lot